we must have known each other since what, like the first of around 2002, maybe. 2002. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. See it's each been other long. like once a year. This the Nambul new hard yeah. partying day. Whenever we were a snowed an ambulance. <laughs> like you know, after when we're at NAM, we often get NAM fracks and need an ambulance and get a stake down us and then uh, some IPAs. He's been making giant Stradivariuses, which if, I figured, well, if someone can make a giant Stradivarius, they can make an electric guitar, so why don't we make a guitar? Yeah, I'm Jason Burns, Luthier at Blast Colt. Um, I've been building double basses and uh, electric guitars and electric basses for almost 20 years now. And uh, I've known these cats at Orange for damn near 20 years. Um, Aid and, and all the guys there and old Cliff Cooper, the best. I'm, and I'm, I've always been a giant fan of Orange anyway, even, not, even if I didn't know those dudes. Um, and Aid and I are, are buddies, and he designed this guitar for Orange and um, asked us to do it over here at Blast Colt. So I ran with it because it's a cool design. Okay, so this is our new amp. Uh, this is actually what you plug into an amp. This is going to be an orange guitar built out of the UK. These will be built to order. This thing weighs less than four pounds as it is. Traditionally, a stringed instrument would be split down the middle all the way through and quarter sawn together. And this is no different. Uh, we're gonna use mahogany, a solid chunk of mahogany. But I have this source of mahogany that's super dry and light. So it's, it's got that, you know, that vintage sound, but it doesn't weigh, you know, it's not gonna be a 10 pound guitar. Um, it's super light mahogany. It's gonna chime out, you know. It's gonna be nice. A nice stability, that will make it sound great. This mahogany sounds great. Chords are gonna ring out of this like a gong. So this is gonna be natural below the binding. So it's gonna be like a gloss mahogany back. So, same with the neck. It's gonna have this fretboard, which is ebony, lock inlays. It's gonna have a, a very slight 59 Les Paul kind of V here, which blends into a big C up here. You know, I hope Dave Van Epp's going to be happy with that because that's what he reckons to see is the best neck. Cheers, Dave. Um, it's going to have a feel. That's what I want from this guitar. I know that's what Abe um, had in mind when he designed it and told me about the neck. We want people to grab this thing and just feel at home immediately and go, wow, cool. Um, which often means, you know, uh, you spend a lot of time hand shaping the neck by the end of it. That way, when your hand goes around it, it just feels like you should be playing it for hours, you know? And I think, like I said before, I, we want to create something that kind of spans all the genres of music and styles um, and have something at the end of the day that's classic that's going to look good forever. With the uh, orange logo on the headstock, I used Mother of Pearl and I, I was able to cut most of it out on the router and then I had to go back old school style with my knives and everything and chop it out. And you'll see also on the, on the actual Mother of Pearl, um, a lot of it's cut with the jeweler's saw because there's, that's the only way to really get those kind of points. And I love to do inlay actually, it's, it's kind of one of my favorite. The, these piddly little tiny jobs that take a lot of detail and time, it's just zen. Like when you chop something up and you're able to just drop it into another surface and it fits perfect, there's something like really cool about that. I get off on it. 
and then we're going to have this the chessboard binding again is going to fall around the edge here so this looks quite big the logo at the minute but when, once the binding's on there I think it's going to be about right. The body, you know, here in the UK, I, I get the wood and it's really raw, so I have to do a lot of surfacing and thickness sanding to get it the right thickness. And then I, I always do a uh, two-piece because I like the opposing grain and, and a center line. It just makes a stronger, more stable guitar. I know a lot of people talk about, oh, it's a one-piece body, but I don't like using one big wide board because it usually wants to cup one way or the other over time, no matter how dry you get it. But this makes a, a nice uh, solid body that's going to be stable. Plus, it gives you this center line, and so you you line everything you know perfectly on the center line, and it actually helps build and keep things perfectly centered. That's Lulu. She's quality control. I had a quality control right here. Oh, she's making sure this shit goes down right. Um, for the for the neck pocket, I use my CNC router because I want this neck to be the perfect angle, the perfect height, and shoot to these bridge holes exactly on intonation. A lot of the rounding, you know, the roundovers and the binding, it's all done by hand. This route is a P90 soap bar route, but I think we're gonna use filtertrons in it with a dog ear, the dog ear ring. It's quite, I kind of like that look. Uh, and filtertrons are great because they're low output humbuckers. So you get all the chime without all the LED lights, you know, going in your guitar, you know, so. So this works really well because you've got effectively something that's probably going to come out of round five and a half K no more than that. So it's gonna have plenty of chime, like a single coil wood, but it's a humbucker and it's a, it's a filtertron basically, which is a great sounding pickup for just all round. You can play any kind of music on it. Uh, the dog ear ring, I think is a nice touch. There's kind of elements of Gibson and Gretsch on that, you know. Uh, if you want to order it with soap bars, the route is the same. So all you have to do is let us know first uh, and we won't pile up the holes for the dog ear. Your traditional toggle, volume, volume, tone, tone. Tunematics, dot tail piece. Uh, I think the whole thing is gonna come out around seven, seven and a half pounds, which is the perfect weight for that kind of guitar, I think, you know. Uh, I'm excited to take this to the next stage.
kind of like a good a good 15. I understand the kind of neck profile. Yeah, you can see it glistening in the light there. You know. The whole thing at the minute is about six pounds. Yeah, let's yeah, actually let's let's weigh it and see what the guitar is by itself here. With no hardware on it yet. Oh, look at that. Look, man, you almost called it there. At the minute, with no pickups and electronics and strings, five pounds, eight ounces, eight and a half ounces. Yeah, it's pretty light for a solid body I'm guitar with no chambers. So happy with that. That's that is that is like fifties one. using the uh, Graftech tusk nut and kind of that off-white it matches nicely with the binding and everything it's like a synthetic bone right yeah but it makes you stay in tune because it slides a little it's bit slippery yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah you always yeah. want a slippery nut yeah man <laughs> That's the first note ever played on the guitar. <laughs> 